Amyloidosis is a very rare uh, blood disorder that is caused by uh, the position of a protein called the amyloid protein in various organs and tissues. This protein usually is produced by cells, normal cells that are in the bone marrow. The protein is go, goes to the circulation and deposited in all these different organs, producing different type of damages in all these organs. It's a very, uh, very unusual disease, very rare. Just to give you an idea, in the United States, there are around 2,000 to 3,000 uh, patients diagnosed with A amyloidosis a year, and some statistics show that the incidence of this disease is five to ten people per million per year. So it's a very rare disease. That usually is not detected on the early stages of the disease. So by the time patients go to the consult and this disease is diagnosed, sometimes it's too late. And in those patients, particularly if they have multiple organs involved, the prognosis is poor, maybe one or two years. However, in those patients uh, in which the disease is detected early and the treatment is started early, usually the prognosis is good and they survive more than five years after specific treatment. Because this disease usually affects multiple organs and there is usually a very range of uh, variable symptoms. From very non-specific symptoms such as weight loss, tiredness, shortness of breath, or swelling, leg swelling, to more advanced symptoms. So, but the patient can be with all these vague symptoms for six months up to one year, going through different tests, going from doctor to doctor until finally they have their specific test done where you can reach the diagnosis. If the disease is uh, detected on the early stages, uh, most of these patients can go and receive treatment, specific treatment, which is basically chemotherapy. The treatment and of course the prognosis of these patients, it depends on how aggressive is the disease, the age of the patient and the general condition of the patient, how many organs are involved, and how soon the treatment is start, starts. So all these factors uh, will determine who are the patients who will do well in the long term. Diagnosis, uh, it can be done with urine and blood tests. And with those tools, you can almost get uh, the diagnosis, but there are then specific tests that you can do. Depending on which organ are, organs are involved, you need to take a sample of those organs with a biopsy. And that's when you can see the amyloid deposition in those organs. Particularly with the heart, because one, of, one third of these patients are involved, has cardiac involvement, there are just basic tools that, like an electrocardiogram, an echocardiogram, a cardiac MRI. It will give you, I will say 90, 95% uh, the diagnosis and of course in some group of patients you need to do also a heart biopsy to find the amyloid position in the heart. For AL amyloidosis usually the kidney is affected but also heart in one-third to two-thirds of the patients. Uh, skin, uh, the peripheral nerves, lungs, the gastrointestinal tract. These are the organs that usually are involved with this disease. Chemotherapy, and there are different forms of chemotherapy from oral chemotherapy to intravenous chemotherapy. And in some cases, maybe 10, 20 percent of patients, uh, they can receive a stem cell transplantation. We work together with Princess Margaret Hospital. Uh, ten years ago, we opened a, a cardiac amyloid clinic at PMH, uh, where we see patients with different type of amyloid, particularly AL amyloidosis. And we've been doing a lot of research in this area, particularly in the area of biomarkers. So biomarkers are different molecules that are measured in the blood 
of patients that can't eventually use as a tool for diagnosis uh, and prognosis of these patients. And we found that there are different markers, biomarkers, that identify patients at risk of developing worsening cardiac complications in the long term. We also uh, were able to identify patients who are not eligible or not ideal candidates for stem cell transplantation, which is one of the options, treatment options for these patients. Again, related to the biomarkers, we determined that patients who have very high levels of biomarkers, they don't do well after a stem cell transplant. And that currently is, is one of the inclusion criteria to determine who receive the specific treatments. So it's an area that is, is definitely growing. The diagnosis and the prognosis of patients with AL amyloidosis have changed dramatically in the last 10 years. 10 years ago, these patients didn't have any options really, and they had maybe one or two years survival. Now, with the use of different chemotherapies, with the use of stem cell transplantation, their survival is more than five, six years, and they do relatively well. This is just one part. It's a very common form of amyloid, the AL amyloidosis, but there are many others. There are some uh, what we call familiar amyloidosis, which are genetically related, uh, and that those, uh, those type of amyloidosis, uh, it can be diagnosed with blood tests by determining specific genes. Uh, there are other forms related to uh, or secondary to other processes, like patients with rheumatoid arthritis can develop secondary amyloidosis, and there are other forms that of amyloidosis that people who are the age of 70, 75 can also develop, as we call senile amyloidosis. There are multiple types of amyloidosis, and, and uh, uh, we, most of them are we're we're following here at the, at the Toronto General Hospital together with uh, Princess Margaret. It's a very frustrating process. Uh, these are patients who usually uh, are young and they go from doctor to doctor complaining of multiple symptoms and the diagnosis is not made for six months to one year. Uh, and uh, there is a lot of frustration in patients and families until uh, someone decides to do the specific test and then the diagnosis is made and that's when the process starts. And of course, unfortunately, uh, this is a disease that uh, is sort of close related to cancer somehow. So um, it is devastating sometimes for patients and families to realize that sometimes there are no options available because the disease is in advanced uh, stages. He's young, he's 43 years old, and this disease usually affects people who are about the age of 50, 50 to 70 years old. Around 10% of the patients below the age of 50 are affected, and less than 5% of the patients below the age of 40 are affected with this disease. Um, Unfortunately, there are no alarms for these patients. Where there is no predisposition. There are, there are no detected genes that we can identify. People and physicians have to be aware that even though this is a rare disease, it can affect a very range, large range of patients, mostly male. And there are specific tests that should be done and if those tests are positive, these patients have to be referred immediately to a specialist or a Princess Margaret Hospital or here at the Toronto General Hospital if these patients are presumed to have cardiac amyloidosis.